well, guess what's trending right now in the news? Wildlife is thriving around Chernobyl since the people left. And I thought I should just get in here and give my two cents about the wildlife that's in Chernobyl and what's really happening. It's kind of funny because on this guy's site, on the New Scientist, he says the wildlife is thriving in Chernobyl. The site of the world's worst nuclear accident is now in wildlife haven. See, this first sentence is a lie right there. The site of the world's worst nuclear accident is in Japan. It's not in Chernobyl. So, right off the bat, big lie. The abundance of large animals around Chernobyl, such as deer, elk, and wild boar, matches that of nature reserves in the region, and wolves are seven times as common. I would have to wonder about these numbers. Who's documenting what? Whatever negative effects there are from radiation, they are not as large as the negative effects of having people there. Says Jim Smith of the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. We're not saying there weren't radiological effects at all. We can't see effects on populations as a whole. Now that's complete, utter, strontium bullshit right there. There's documentations that whenever an animal dies in Chernobyl, that it'll take five, six times as long to decompose because the bacteria that's supposed to decompose is not there. So you'll have things that die and they stay like mummified. The message is clear, he says. The everyday things we do, such as occupying an area, forestry, hunting, and agriculture, are what damages the environment. But let's not mention radiation. The striking Chernobyl findings reveal that nature can flourish if people would just leave it alone. Then again, another important thing to keep in mind. In nature, it's survival of the fittest. It isn't like a human condition where, yeah, we take care of people who can't take care of themselves. In the wild, that does not exist. If they see an animal that's sick or if there's an animal that's just mutated and it can't perform on its own, the other animals will kill it. It, it just becomes food. And that's nature. All these animals that are mutated, they, they die first and they get wiped out by the strongest that survive. Conservation International says Chernobyl is a living testament to the resilience of nature. Wild places can come back if we give them a chance, but we don't want to rely on nuclear disasters to make this happen, he says. Rely on nuclear disasters? Are you freaking kidding me? Let's not forget, in Germany, the wild boars. People cannot eat the wild boars because they're too full of radiation. This does not hurt only Belarus and Ukraine, this hurt many of Russians as well. Their population dropped, I think, by five years because of Chernobyl. All of Europe, there's a lot of gardens that they can't use, even as far as way as Scotland. They can't use the gardens and, and grow their produce. There's too much cesium in their garden. They also reanalyzed historical data on animal densities from the first 10 years after the disaster between 1987 and 1996 by combining that with contemporary measurements of cesium-137, a marker of radiation levels, which is really crazy. You really can't say it's a marker. I mean, it's one of 1,500 different radioactive isotopes that all have varying different decay cycles. Smith calculated that residual radiation was having little impact on animal survival then again that's full of shit and i think if mr smith would like could he please move his family over there first and see how long they survive see how long his great great grandparent kids and how they come out smith says that the worst impacts of radiation on animals occur within the first year or so after the incident may because of short-lived but highly toxic isotopes such as iodine-131 technetium-99 for example, cattle died after eating grass contaminated with the iodine, and early studies showed that mice suffered from many more miscarriages. By 1987, the dose rate fell low enough to avoid these large, more acute effects, said Smith. Since the disaster, the estimated radiation doses the animals receive in the worst hit areas have stabilized at around 1 milligram per day, about a tenth of dose someone received during a abdominal CT scan. Maybe I'm going to stop doing those abdominal CT scans, guys. 
To find out whether this daily dose is high enough to cause damaging mutations, Smith is currently comparing mutation rates in fish from Chernobyl with those in uncontaminated controls. Mike Wood of the University of Salford, UK, whose ongoing wildlife camera study Chernobyl Zone has confirmed the return of the brown bear and the European bison, says that although wildlife is thriving, it's probably too soon for large animals to evolve radiation resistance because they breed so slowly. I really don't think there's going to be very many species that are going to be able to evolve radiation resistance. I think that's a myth. And these animals, there's only so much a cell can do against radiation, to be honest. It's crazy what they're thinking here. Yeah, maybe we'll get like a mutated cockroach race in the future that will take over the planet. As you can see, I think what's going to happen is these 500 reactors all around the world, there's going to be some event that's going to come along and it's going to knock off most of them all at one time. And that'll be the end. And you're going to have Chernobyl's and Fukushima's all around the map and there's going to be maybe a few algaes and some cockroaches left over but mankind maybe there'll be a few in a hole somewhere i think that's about all she wrote Thank you.